Good morning, everybody. Today is Monday, December 15th, 2014. I want to welcome you to Phoenix Trading Strategies Trading Room. Today we're going to be going over the indicators. We're going to be going over um, strategies. We're going to be going over trades that occurred and potential trades that are taking place right now. Let's see if we can find something that is suitable for us to engage. For those of you that are here for the first time, uh, welcome. Would like to ask of you to actually take a look at the website. Uh, there's a lot of great information in each page uh, and the about us as to why I developed Phoenix Trading Strategies. You'll find a little history about myself. Uh, I am I am a broker. I have a Series 3, Series 34. I am currently not registered with anyone right now because I decided to develop um, this software. When you go here to the trading indicators, you can actually hit, let's say for instance, just the picture and then you can have a brief description of what the indicators do. Uh, I am going to be starting the trade forecasting this January. So for those of you that are interested, send me an email, sign up for it. You won't be disappointed. We have uh, training sessions, actually, where we do live, real-time trading in the market that we're going to be doing Thursday mornings uh, from 2 a.m. Eastern to 4 a.m. Eastern. And here's the schedule. Uh, then we're also going to be doing training sessions twice a month from 7 p.m. Pacific to 10 p.m. Pacific. So I'm going to do a three-hour during the Asian session. I, end up, I actually may end up doing um, a three-hour for the uh, European session. And they're going to be different each week. One will have a European session. One will have an Asian session, etc. But I uh, promise you won't be disappointed. It's actually very, very, uh, very good for you, especially those of you that have bought the software because I've been training each one of you, giving you a one-on-one -on -one attention so that you can actually understand what's going on, how to interpret these indicators, and how we're able to basically 95%, with 95% accuracy, pinpoint these trades and still have a 30-minute window to an hour window before the trade unfolds. So being that said and done, let's go to the disclaimer and we'll begin. Future stocks and spot currency trading have large potential rewards but also large potential risk. You must be aware of the risk and be willing to accept them in order to invest in the future stocks and forex markets. Don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. This website is neither a solicitation nor an offer to buy, sell futures, stocks, or forex. No representation is being made that at any account will or is likely to achieve profits or losses similar to those discussed on this website. Past performance of indicators or methodology are not necessarily indicative of future results. Being that said and done, let us start looking at a few charts and we will see what occurred during the night. So this is the pound Aussie, and I'm going to go over actually the indicators because I think it's very important to explain the function of each one and you'll understand why our leading indicator has no rival. It is a unicorn in its own self, in its own right, as well as the volume indicator. Now, our leading indicator is this, these golden dots, and I'm going to circle them sometimes or put a little square around them so that you can appreciate them because what these dots do <coughs> is that, number one, they notify you that there is momentum and volume built up and that the market makers are actually going to start to drive this market. And that's a strong statement and a very, very aggressive one to make. 
No one out there can make that claim until now. Our algorithm for this specific indicator that we call the power dots is giving you, and this is a 10 minute before the market actually starts to move. In some cases, it'll give you 20 minutes, 30, 40, 50, 60, sometimes an hour before it moves. In this case here, it gave you one, two, three, four, five, practically an hour before this trade unfolded. Now, why did I draw these lines here? These lines signify basically historically that they have been plotted as oh, power dots before. So those are price points, not pivots. As you can see here, these are price points that the market makers, banks, liquidity providers, whatever you may call them, anyone trading this market with big money, size, respects these levels. These are not pivots. These are price points. And if you ever compare them to pivots, you're going to make a wrong mistake because that's not how the algorithm is calculated. Now, these purple dots here that you see, these are pivot points. And I'm going to change the pointer. And these pivot points, what they do is that they basically announce a true reversal. So for instance, here they were going long, then this one pulled back, and then this one was short. So this basically demonstrated a true reversal. And it did it around this price, uh -oh, which is basically a very important price point for them. That's why they didn't break through or breach and literally pulled back. Now, I would have never taken this trade because I didn't have power dots. This one here showed power dots, but it showed, number one, above a previous level in a higher time frame. So this basically confirmed that this was a very important price point. As soon as I saw that they started trading around this area and that they formed a pivot, this was going to go right back up to this level, which it did. And instead, it continued even further. So we're going to go over those trades because I think it's very important to understand the whole process of why it's happening. So I believe that is the main the main thing there. These dots in between, right here, these are trend dots, and they basically appear with each candle. Very significant. I'll explain how they work when we start looking for trades. This is a trend stop, so basically as soon as they break through it, if once means that they've pretty much finished their bullish run. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that that's our exit. You know, normally when that happens, we're already out because we know the level, the price point that they're heading to. No question about it. So we're pre not only are we predicting volume, price action, and momentum before it actually occurs, but we're predicting the exit as well. So when you have that type of information, you could trade with confidence because, number one, you know that they're not going to go below a certain price point. And number two, if you know that, and then you know the next level that they're going to, then basically you pretty much have calculated, and we'll measure this just so you can see for yourself on this specific currency, that you have pretty much measured the outcome, which in this case is 116 pips in this trade alone on the 30 minute. And if you can do that with time, literally, in this case, you had one, one hour, two hour, three hour, four hours, four hour window. As soon as these stats started to plot, right now we've designed it in a way that you get a alert when it starts to plot. So when it starts to plot and you get, and, it's, and, and the power dot starts to plot, you get an alert that says, trade with me. Why? because it's inviting you to analyze the trade so you can assess and measure the risk of the trade and the outcome of the trade because more than likely you're going to take that trade.
The students that, I've, that I have trained to do this no longer fear the trade because we have removed a, the X factor, which is uncertainty, and now have provided them with certainty. So when you have that, that changes the whole perception of trading because now you actually have an outcome. Now this is the pound dollars, you know, we're going to look at other trades, of course, but I wanted to show you this one because I think it's very important. Now, here, for instance, in the 30-minute, we're starting to see that they are trading or that they are setting up to go short. And we will box that in so that we see that in the smaller time frames where it was. Uh-uh, do not do that. And we're going to move it right to it so that when it comes out in the smaller time frames, we know exactly where it's plotting. Now let's go down to the 15 minute. Now you see this distance right here that it plotted from here? This is telling you, and also because it's trading below this level, this distance is telling you that more than likely this is going to drop to the downside. However, my only concern right now is that this has not flatlined the way it has here. It's beginning to, but the fact that price action is trading below this previous level, which has been plotted in previous days, if it stays below it, then I know that it's going to come down to this level, which in this case, our outcome is measured by 91 pips. If I know for a fact and for sure that this is going to happen, then I'm game. But in this case, I don't have any power dots here, but I do have them in the higher time frame. The fact that they're plotting in the higher time frame makes this, tra this trade sometimes more valid than this one in this time frame. So the fact that they're plotting here in the 30 minute, and we're going to go to the 30 minute again, and that there is a distance between, between the power dots and here, to some extent tells me that this may not be breached, but now here's the reason why they might breach it. You see how price action has, is being driven up, but more importantly, is that the trend dots here are below the candles. And you start to see here the trend stops start to turn. This tells me that they're going to potentially breach this level and go right through it. So this will not serve as a resistance level. But I want to wait and see until I have a candle close above this level here above this price point, which is 190.70, um, 190 actually, if I'm not mistaken. And if this next candle closes above on the 15 minute, forget the 30 minute because it's too much of a higher time frame, <clears throat> or the 10 minute, then at that point, I'm interested in continuing to go along because it's interpreting that. This is a 10 minute, but we haven't really had any candles close at this level close above it and this one that did and that basically just pulled them right back down so if this candle closes within the next minute and then we have the next candle just start to move then I'm going to tell you that this trade is going to continue to go long and that they're going to breach this level because in the higher time frame that's what they're announcing now in the 15 minute time frame when we look at it you can see the price action is starting to drive to the upside one more time, and so are the trend dots. So if everything stays in line, then we know that, then that pretty much confirms that they are going to make a move to the upside. No questions asked. But I need more confirmation here. So this trade is actually a very good trade to be following right now. But when I compare, you know, and I like to, go down to the smaller minutes when I know their intent, that their intent is, is being defined. 
I want to confirm. I want confirmation. Here in the 10 minute, we have a pivot right here. And now, and it closed above this level. And now this candle is the one that's either going to drive this to the upside or come right back down the way these did. But I doubt that it's going to come right back down because it started trading above this level. And anything trading above this level goes up. So in this case, we're measuring that it would probably go from this level here and potentially here. And if that's the case, you're looking at 70 pips. But if it just goes here to this level that it previously did, you're looking at 30 pips. I don't care how you look at it. That's still a great trade. This is a trade to the upside, in my opinion, based on the technology. That's a strong statement. And not many people can make that statement with assurance. And here, for instance, you can see how they started driving. As soon as this happened here, they just started driving here. But here we're seeing it live on the live edge of the market. Now, here's another thing that we're going to take a look at, which many of you have never really seen before, and volume. We're going to make comparisons of volume. This is my volume indicator. This is everyone else's volume indicator. Now, with the conventional volume indicator, would you, after seeing this move, would you really take this trade long? The answer is no. Why is that? Because it gives you nothing. And why? Because they use moving averages behind this indicator, which is the wrong way of looking at it, because they have the wrong algorithm, where my algorithm on the live edge of the market is telling you right now that they are bidding 31 million, but they've only sold 14 million. So there is, how, let me repeat that. Wow, did you just say that they're buying they're bidding 31 million in this candle and they've only sold 15 million and there is a difference of 16 million positive that cannot be filled and so that means that this means in actuality that this is a major driver of this candle the demand to purchase and that there isn't enough out there being offered the answer is yes Look at this candle. This candle, they basically put in 138 million long, and there's 116 million short, with a net of 22 million long. And that's why this puppy went up. This candle, there was 99 million long, 107 million short. There was basically 6.5 million short. Not a really big move with a hundred with over two hundred million and not a big move. Are you kidding me? This next candle, a hundred and thirty seven million long, a hundred and forty million short, a difference of two point four million, and it was a bullish candle. Wow, I've never seen negative volume in a reported in a bullish candle. Well, you have now. And whenever you see that they start to do it at this level, for instance, you know, trading above the trend stop or trading, in this case, below the, the power dots, then what you're going to see, we're going to see this volume here, is that, for instance, here in this one, they, they had 54 million long and 60 million short. This was a bullish candle with bearish volume. So they were starting to offset their positions in order to do what I call currency portfolio rebalancing. This next candle, 71 million long, 83 million short, a difference of 11 million to the short side, and they literally pulled their longs out. Here, you had 72 million long, 80 million short. It was a bullish candle, not bearish, but had bearish volume. Here, 81 million long, 92 million short. 
again, 9.7 million difference in this case. Wasn't a bearish candle, it was bullish. This next candle, 63 million long, 71 million short. Whoa, and it moved. And then finally, not least, this next bad boy, and this one had 54 million long, 84 million short, 30 million on the negative, and they basically brought it right back down like a screamer. And then it never looked back because it collapsed. But these power dots right here were telling you that this trade was dead to the upside and that it was going to come down. Now, as soon as you saw it, it basically breached below this level because if you would have really wanted to be conservative, you, I guess you could have gotten into this trade and then, you know, here in this candle, and then you would have hit this. So as soon as they traded below, yeah, it would have come up and retested, but you would have already been in it. So you would have picked up on this move alone. Let's measure that. When in doubt, pull out the ruler. 110 pips. Where right now, we are currently at, and let us change that to the crosshair. So we are at 190.71 to 190.92. That's a 20 pip trade right there that I identified for you. 20 pips. Now, if you took it, you should be excited. If you didn't, then you better get excited because these are the trades that you're going to find. These are the trades that you're going to get. These are the trades that you're going to take because you're no longer going to fear the trade. You're going to look forward to the trade. You're going to be excited about the trade, and you're going to say, oh, my God, this maniac did it. And the answer is yes, I did. Me and my team, we did it. We did what no one out there has been able to do, which is pinpoint with precision when in actuality the market makers and banks are actually going to start to drive volume and direction into the market momentum and giving you a 30 minute to an hour window oh my god if you're not salivating over this right now you have issues of the tremendous kind Go see a psychologist, have some coffee, slap yourself a little bit because I'm giving you a dose of reality and you're either going to accept it or you're going to deny it. And sometimes it's very hard to accept change, especially technological change because what I'm showing you is unconventional at every level. It will make everything that you've learned about trading in Forex obsolete. And you're going to feel, wow, I was so mistaken. But you shouldn't feel that way because now you should feel, wow, I am completely educated now in what is actually happening. And the reason why is because I'm going to teach you how to understand the financial institutional mindset and decision process of why their algorithms are doing what they're doing and why they are moving the market and that is much more powerful than anything that you've ever seen before because when it really what it comes down to at the end of the day is can I demonstrate that this technology works and the answer is yes I'll give you an example right here at this level. We'll put the, the data box up so you can see the volume here. As soon as they came to it, look, they tried to sell aggressively and get out of their short positions. They sold 86 million, but there was only 54 million bought. That means that there was a difference here of 32 that they couldn't unload. Talk about stress for someone trying to get out of a situation. This next candle, 51 million, and there was 36 million offered. So they filled and were able to get out of those positions. There was 16 million 
difference on the positive side that was in that could not be filled and was in demand. This next candle, 41 million long, 42 million short. They missed it by a million, so they were able to offset, making it a negative candle, of course, with positive or with bullish volume. This next one, here is where it just became outright nasty. They basically offered 60 million and only eight and 80 million were were basically buying only six they sold the inventory and then there was more demand for it and it ran to the upside this next candle 66 million to the upside 82 million to the downside and they're trading above this level and on and on and on look this candle alone they offered 75 million and there was 102 million bid. There was a difference of demand of 27 million, and this drove this next candle up. This one was 162 million long, 153 million short, and the demand for buying the pound against the Aussie was even higher. And that's why you see this movement. Here, for instance, this is 77 million long, 60 million short. There is a a surplus demand of 17 million and that's why this candle is positive here is 15 million 16 million long 17 million long 17 million short 18 million short that's being offered 18 million long that's being bought so they're pr pretty much neck and neck now there's seven, 19 million offered 20 million offered only 18 million bought at this point so there is a negative here that they could not unload 24 million is being offered only 19 million has is being basically bought at this point wow talk about waking up 21 million now 22 million being bought 26 million offered 23 million Oh my God! I don't know. I moved it. Twenty-four million right now. Long. Twenty-nine million. Thirty million short. Thirty-one million short. Thirty-three million short. Twenty-five million still long on the live edge of the market. And sometimes you can see, like for instance, but look at this. Even though they're putting all that volume into that, don't you agree that this candle should have screamed to the upside? Yet all they're doing is just pushing, pushing volume into this tiny little candle. Tiny, tiny, tiny. And no movement. 31 million long right now. 38 million short. Talk about neck and neck and rebalancing. With a, in this case, 6 million or no, no, yeah, about six million difference. Don't you agree that this candle should have exploded to the upside as volume started to increase? But it's not. That's another lesson for another day. What they're doing there is basically rebalancing their risk, offsetting positive trades to negative trades so they may pull right back down but it, they came exactly to this level which is where they had previously been and that was a 20 pip move and now they're pulling back now they have bid 43 million but 57 million 59 million has been offered a difference of now 62 million has been offered against that 44 million that has been bought so now they're aggressively selling aggressively selling so that means that they could when they start selling that way and you see that that means that they could drop the price will actually drop because they're desperate to get rid of it and there aren't enough buyers to take it and that's why you see this pullback this is on the live edge of the market 
52 million right now that have been bid, 68 million that have been offered. So you're seeing the emotion of the market right here taking place right now. That is fascinating. So we'll go back, we'll come back to this trade. Let's look at another one. Ooh, the pound dollar. I love this one. And here, you know, I had previously drawn out these lines. This was a great move. I mean, just unreal. From here all the way here, 100 pips. Excellent move. What's the difference? No power dots. It's okay. Historically, it proved here that they weren't. But during the European session, Asian and late Asian session, this thing told you it was going to go long, and it did. And this went long from this point to this point, and that was 36 pips. These would have been the easiest 36 pips you could have made. No question about it. This is a 15-minute look, and they're plotting below a previous level in a higher time frame. I see this, and, I'm, and I see that price action never broke below it, not even to challenge the power dots. I'm throwing the kitchen sink at my grandmother's ice bucket behind it on this trade because I know that I'm not going to lose. I've taken the uncertainty out of trading. Now I look forward to the trade. And this trade, I would have taken to the short side as well, especially after I saw this pivot. Because historically, they showed me that any time that they went to this level, if they did not trade above it and continue, they were going to come right back down to this level. So I would have expected another 36 pips down, but instead it broke right through it, and then it really just broke right through it. That made the difference. And we can look at it and see it on the higher time frame. If on the higher time frame it identified, it did not. But again, historically, this level was respected. So you, would, you could have taken that trade if you had chosen to. Let's see, on the, on the 60 minute, it did plot. After it hit this level, it said down. If I see these power dots on the 60 minute, not only am I throwing the kitchen, I, I mean, I'm throwing the kitchen sink at it, make no mistake. Look at here, this was a news announcement, and they plotted literally three hours before this news announcement, and it came down here. So. For trading the news, this is the bomb. It's explosive. It will change the way you trade forever. Forever. It identifies trades in ways that you never, ever really thought you could see again to visualize or understand. And the reason why is because what we've done is we've decoded how the how the bank's algorithms are actually operating and we're taking only those trades that are truly defined for us let's go to the next one the us yen got to love the yen you know i saw this trade yesterday and i was actually training someone and we took this trade and it came down short and at the open, we got in actually about right here, and this was a 10-minute, and we yielded 60, 65 pips out of a 69-pip move. Awesome trade. Awesome. And then when it didn't breach through it, it I told them, look, it didn't break through, but there are no power dots that are, that are formed here. So normally I wouldn't take this trade, but since this level is coming from a higher time frame and identified very strongly, I would take this trade, but I didn't take it because I was demonstrating to him how to use this and the type of trades that he should look for. Now, in this case, you see how they came down to it. They never traded below it, and they went right back up. As soon as they started to go up and price action started to trade above these trend dots, and then these power dots started to form, if these power dots would have formed here or here, I would be all, I would say, 
excellent trade, but because they formed here, it didn't define it as a resistance level. It defined it as the fact that they were going to break right through this level and continue to the next one, which was right here. So this 69 pip move in actuality ended up becoming a 70 pip trade. Again, these are just things that you're going to see that are going to change your whole perspective of trading. And I usually make my decisions off of the 10 and 15 minute. But look at how strong this level was identified historically. I mean, this was just, you know, this is another one. This one is one, two, three. As soon as this one, this one formed here, even the price came, you know, came above but never ever actually reached and they started to come down. As soon as they came down, I would have taken this trade here and gone short. No question about it. But this trade on the 10 minute was more valuable to me than any other because it had plotted Friday. And if I see that power dots come out on Friday, the open is mine because there's a number of trades that will take place. Usually you'll find five trades on Sunday that you will not miss. And you can then at that point analyze and make your choice. This is the Aussie dollar. And this is the 15 minute. Would I have taken a trade here? No. Would I have taken this trade to the upside? Yeah, and I probably would have gotten out knowing that it was going to hit this level. I don't think I would have shortened, taken it short because, you know, wouldn't have really made a whole lot of sense. What would the outcome of this trade been? 30 pips. You know what? 30 pips are better than nothing, especially when you know that you can throw the kitchen sink at them and double, triple, quadruple, quintuple your lots to take this trade because you know with precision that this trade is the one that you're going to make money on. So you may not be getting 100 pips out of it, but if you know for a fact that you're going for 31 specific pips, you can take 25 out of them without really questioning the outcome because it has already been predefined for you. And that's a strong statement to make. Now, would I have taken this short, seeing what has happened historically here? Yeah, I probably would have taken this short. But after you make a trade, you know, and you're positive, that sort of takes the definition away from having to trade any further. This next one. See, this one was, again, out the gate. This is the pound CAD. The pad CAD doesn't move a lot, but when it moves, it shakes. As you can see, they plotted here. At the open, boom, came right down, traded below it. So even if, I, even if it went above it, it came right back down. The outcome here was not grand, per se, but let's say that it was 48 pips. 48 pips without any challenge, without any nonsense. And that says a lot. Let's go to the next one here. This one is the Euro Aussie. Now, out the gate on the 15 minute, because I saw this, I knew at the open they were going to go long, and I actually showed my customer that it did go long, and it did. We didn't take it short because there was no need. We basically, you know, played this trade out live going long. But there was another trade that was even better, and that was the pound New Zealand, or the Euro New Zealand. I want to see if I have that. this one here, I believe. No, it was the pound New Zealand that was better. This one plotted here, but as you can see, there wasn't really much movement at all. I mean, it was just ranging. And that was a 10 minute, 15 minute, let's see what 10 minute, what it looked like. Now, one of the things that you're going to see, and I'm going to show you very soon, is that we've developed an alert system for this on NinjaTrader. 
that will email you every time a dot is plotted because it's announcing that there is volume and momentum. Now here on the 10 minute out, you know, out the gate, it announced it was going to go long. So I would have taken this trade to the upside here. What would the outcome have been? 61 pips. 61 pips. If I would have taken 50 pips out of that trade, I would be happy as can be. This next one, the Euro USD. Ah, yes. The famous Euro. Now, this one really didn't really do a whole lot. I think I would have stayed away from this one. Let me see if the 10 minute would have changed my mind, but I don't think so. No, wouldn't have changed my mind. It was all over the place. Even now, though, it's announcing short right now. And more than likely, it will go short, but more likely, it will probably come here. And if it doesn't break this level, then it will bounce. So 124.28 is where it could stop. And if it doesn't stop there, then it will come here to 124.21. So you're looking at 10 pips. Uh, you know, if you like 10 pips, go for it. I'm not interested. You know, I like to t I like to make minimum 25 pips per trade, minimum. If not, it's just not my cup of tea. The pound yen, ah yes, we like the pound yen. It is our friend. Look at this, out the gate, this thing collapsed. And we saw this trade as well yesterday when we were training. 117 pips down. Ouch. Ouch. That hurt someone feeling it. Let me tell you something. The banks are never going to see your trades. I'll tell you why. One, because many of you may not have the courage to pull the trigger. But two, for those of you that do have the courage to pull the trigger and trade, two things are going to happen. You're on a retail feed. That means that each tick is valued at 100000 Banks do not quote at 100000 They quote at a million a tick. A million a tick. So, what you're seeing here, and we'll pull out the data box, the volume indicator. So, what you're seeing here is that right here, and this is a 10-minute, look how much volume they shoved into this thing, okay? 169 million long, 219 million short, and they were trying to get rid of their inventory, and they were still, they were still negative by 49 million. This next one, 81 million long, 111 million short, they, were still, they still could not load 29 million. And that's why they basically pulled away. And then this one came in, and this one was 156 million long, 148 million short. So there was actually demand, and that's why this thing kicked to the upside. Because there was demand to buy the pound against the yen. But there was no more interest in the yen because they were unloading, unloading the yen. Now, if you see this happening, and like here, for instance, great example, power dots start to form right above a previous level. What happened? came right back down. What is the volume here? The volume here on this one is 186 million long, 135 million short. Difference of 52 million to the upside, but not enough to buy. So what happened to the next one? They pulled back. There was 142 million bid against 162 million that was offered. Again, they didn't have enough to drive the market up and came right back down. This next one, 112 million long, 142 million short, and now we started to see them drive price down and just sell, sell, sell. This one right here, not a movement. 
in this candle. 137 million long, 148 million short. Not one movement, it basically remained flat. But I didn't care. Why? Because they had already started to trade below this previous level and came all the way down here. So what would the outcome be when you see this type of trade, even if you had taken it right there? 69 pips. Right now, look, again, they came up, retested it, couldn't find any interest to go above it, and brought it right back down. And that's why you're seeing this take place here and now. But I would not, you know, would I have taken this trade right now? The answer is no, because I'm late. I'm late in the game. This one is the Pound New Zealand. Ah, yes, this is the one. Look at this. As soon as this formed right here at the open and continued, it basically announced they were going long. Well, let's say you would have gotten in on this candle all the way up here. That's 98 pips. 98 pips. That is huge. And this is the one that we saw. And I said, you know, out of all the trades, this was the one. This was the granddaddy move of them all. You would have picked up 100 pips at the Asian, uh, at the open during the Asian session. 100 pips. And if you're here in the States and you're in California the way I am, you love your sleep. I love my sleep. So I don't really trade the European session anymore per se unless I miss a trade during the Asian session because my kids don't let me trade because they're very demanding of time. Then at that point, you know, I may stay up during the European session to trade and hit and take a trade. But I would never have taken a trade short on this. And if I go to the higher time frame, I'd be looking for power dots to identify a trade to the downside. And I never really saw anything there. 30 minute, nothing. If I see something on the 60 minute, I would be all over it, but nothing. I just didn't see it. And this was the trade of the day. That's it. Here, for instance, you see how they came up, came down, basically bounced off of the trend stop and now came right back up and then came down again. They're trading off of this level right here. See? And they're, now they're going to make a move to the upside. Why? Because the minute that this starts, the minute that this candle closed, if the next one continues, which more likely it will, they're going to breach this level. And when they breach this level, they're going to come all the way up here. So this is a trade for you to look for uh, <clears throat> to unfold after we finish. On gold, this thing is, it's wow. I mean, it just doesn't get any better. If you outline the levels, you know, and I'm going to show you how to do this, believe me, and, you, and you're trading gold spot, this is awesome. This move right here from here to here and now to here is $14.7 in gold. I don't care if you're trading futures. I don't care if you're trading spot. You're making bank. I mean, it's just sick. If you hate money, leave now. Exit the webinar room. But if you love money, then you can't trade without this because you can't afford not to have this in your arsenal. Bottom line is you're trading blind without it. That's it. There is no other way of defining this. If you want 2015 to be the best year of your trading career, you need to get this. And you need to start training right now with me. Because every day that passes by that you don't take that leap of faith, you miss out on making money. Cash. Now, I'm not going to beg you to take my course and buy my indicators. No, no, no. I have no need. <clears throat> None at all. Look at this trade. This was, the, this was a great trade to take. As soon as they started to plot here, look at this. 
six, no, five point five, five and a half dollar move. Five and a half dollar in gold. So am I telling you that you could trade gold and actually make money where other people are getting their their neck handed to them? The answer is yes. I can make your life easy. All you have to do is buy the software. You get a three-day training course with me. Uh, depending on your schedule, we can either do it one day after the other, even though I don't recommend that, because what I like to do is spread out the training sessions every two days if possible, or every three to four days. I'm, you know, I have a customer of mine that we're doing it every week, one day out of a week. So yesterday we did the first session, and he was happy as can be because he's been trading for 20 years and he stopped for eight because he couldn't figure it out until now. So this man had experience in the market in the past and he could value the new information. Now I know that some of you are in Europe right now and I know that some of you are in Asia right now <clears throat> and you're losing sleep. Let me tell you something. When we finish, you won't be able to go back to sleep because you're going to be so excited to know that now you have a system that actually works. You're in a digital war, and the banks are not taking prisoners. Prisoner that they get, they shoot because they want your money, and they are not apologizing for taking it. This is business. It's not personal. Trading was never meant to be personal. It was always business. Never forget that. So now if you understand what the market makers are going to do before they actually do it, don't you think that that sort of took the X factor and fear factor away? I do. Let's continue. Next chart. Oh yes, this was the mini Dow, or the, the Dow right now. I wouldn't have taken this trade. You couldn't kick me to touch this trade, even right now. Now, this trade I would have taken. Why? And this is 86 points. Reason for it is that even though it already started to come to go up from the open, came down, didn't really retest anything, this started to form, price action never ever, not even once attempted to breach the level. This pivot told me take the trade. A pivot above or below the power docks and price action going up, I'm not thinking twice. I was actually expecting, I was expecting this trade actually to go up here. It didn't. It's 86 points. Wow, I'm even telling you you can trade futures with this. Go figure. So am I saying that you can use my software to trade Forex, futures, and stocks? The answer is yes. So if you haven't bought yourself a Christmas gift, this is the one that you plan for. This is the one that you take because it doesn't get any better than this. Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwamsa came early. And it came early with Phoenix Trading Strategies. I hate when they do that. Okay, so this trade, US CAT, nah, never really a great trade, quite honestly. You know, the volume in this has, liquidity in this has just been very low, bottom line. And they haven't been moving at all. They've been moving with the outlying pairs, but, you know, I put it up here because I wanted you guys to see it. Not a bad trade. If you're looking for a very conservative trade, this would have been it. You know, 49 pips. Like I said, nothing to get really excited about. But, hey, whatever toots your horn. Once they start in that direction, they don't really look back. And that's important to understand about the currency that you're trading. Now, I'm going to show you how to trade multiple currencies without having to waste all time all that time in front of the computer. 
because you don't have to. Now, with the alert system, would you have missed this trade? More than likely. Even though it came here, you know, this started to plot here, but this told you price action trading above the trend dots and the trend stop actually also trading to the upside would have told you that they were going to breach this level. So if it came back, you could have taken this trade to the upside because it was never going to breach the trend stop ever. But I like to teach you when the trend, when the power dots form and they actually go short. Because for me, that's a better trade. This, you'd probably have had to look for the trade on your own, quite honestly. I would have never really seen Let's see if, it, if we had any action in the 10 minute, any power dots forming. And if they formed in the 10 minute, great, you're hot. But 10 in the 15 minute time frames are the ones that you base your decisions off of. You can go for your entry in the five minute if you choose to. <clears throat> so what our algorithm is doing is taking into account when they are actually pushing high frequency order flow. Look, let's take a look at the volume. Number one, the power dots formed above this previous level. This is a candidate. We would have looked at this during the Asian session. Now, let's look at the volume. What was the volume here when this started to form? This was 32 million long, 115 million short. Talk about desperation of getting out of short positions. 83 million on the negative that they could not unload. Oops. Next candle, 24 million long, 32 million short. Not a whole lot. They were still negative by 7.4. They knew that they were going to drive this up, that the bulls were going to come in and slap them across their head if they didn't get out and rebalance their position. 67 million long, 42 million short. Now the demand to purchase the U.S. dollar against the CAD is high. Everyone wants to get out of the CAD. Next candle, 38 million long, 29 million short, and they continue to drive. Next candle, 29 million long, 50 million short, 20 million on the negative. Demand started to slow down for it, and that's why they pulled back. This next one, 40 million long, 46 million short. Demand started to increase again for the U.S. dollar. This next candle, 48 million long, 68 million short, didn't move a damn thing, nothing. And power dots are still plotting heavily. Next candle, 49 million long, 58 million short, and it's still moving. Ne Ricardo, are you saying that this bullish candle has bearish volume? Yes. Next candle, 73 million long, 35 million short, the demand is high, 38 million for the US dollar left to purchase and nothing in sight, so the next one moves even more to the upside, 63 million long, 2.4 million short, no more sellers, oops, demand to buy but no more sellers. And that's why they stopped cold right here. 53 million long, 32 million short. And then they just started to pull right back down and came right back down. But this was the trade to take. This was the granddaddy of them all. What was this trade worth to you? Good question. After the pivot right here, 15 pips. Like I said, the US CAD doesn't really move a lot. You know, but when it came right back down and they retested, let me tell you something. As soon as they closed above, the trade was from here to here, and that was 49 pips. You could have taken 40 pips out of that trade easily, easily. No questions asked because you knew what had happened, and you knew that this was an extremely important price point for them, that if they breached it, they had to come right back down here. You see? Bam. So you would have known what the outcome would have been. 
but instead they didn't and they had to drive it up. And that's all she wrote from that perspective. Let's take a look at the pound Aussie trade. See, I told you they were going to pull back. They came up here and they pulled right back down here. So you would you only would have picked up 20 pips and then they would have basically dragged you. If you would have stayed in this trade, they would have dragged you right back down, which is right to this level. Here, I'm waiting. I'm not excited. But remember, in a higher time frame, it said go short. And if I'm not mistaken, it was a 30-minute or was it the 60-minute? Let's take a look. Oh, no, it was the 30-minute. It said short which is exactly what it's done. Oops. Fascinating, isn't it? So this is where it becomes very, very interesting. Your brain starts to, you know, you start to see stars, lights, um, dollar signs start to pop up in your mind. Ding, 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 ding. And you're like, whoa. You mean that I could catch these trades before they actually unfold and I could actually make money and I don't have to fear the trade anymore but look forward to it? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Now, the higher the time frame and the dots forming, the more valid the direction of the trade. This trade will end up or should end up coming down to uh, kill that. This trade should end up coming down here to 1909. It's at 1955. 65. Ooh, that's a 50 pip drop. But if you would have gotten in up here, 1980 to 1905, wow. That's a 75 pip trade right back to the downside. They may come all the way down here to 189.76. So, being that said and done, if you know the direction of the trade and the higher the time frame, the more valid the direction of that trade is, I mean, it just doesn't get any easier. You're not guessing anymore. We're taking the guesswork out of trading. That's huge. That is so huge, it's not even funny. It's amazing, amazing what is happening. Now you can trade during the US session, you can trade during the European session, you can trade during the Asian session. I don't care what session you trade, you're going to find trades and you're going to make money. And if you lose money, it's because Either you weren't awake or you had been drinking and trading instead of drinking and driving. Or you have two kids the way I do, which is a 3-year-old and a 17-year-old, which are always looking for my attention and being a pain in the ass. Excuse me for saying that. I never said that. That has not been recorded in the session. And so it's, it's, it's a wonderful life, ladies and gentlemen. It's Christmas. Christmas time is here. So, for those of you that are interested, I'm going to put my email right here in this chat. And I'm going to give you right now about a minute or two minutes to make questions because this is a great moment to make questions. This is a moment, what I call a moment of truth in your pursuit of happiness because I'm already living mine. That is my email. You can email me questions. If you wish to ask me questions directly, this is my telephone number. You can call me. I will be more than happy to help you and clarify this for you. And if you're really interested, I will do, I will literally show you how to work this for two hours so that you can see for yourself that this is worth every penny. 
Now we are having a holiday special and I'm going to type in that holiday special right now. Normally with the indicators and the three-day training this is valued at over six thousand dollars but because of the holidays if you buy this week and this week only thirty five ninety seven that is the holiday special and I will get you trading live in two weeks you need to prepare your mind that in two weeks you're going to pull the trigger live and you're going to make pips because that is what will take place and happen for you and I'm going to show you how to identify these levels how to map out the trade so that when the trade actually presents itself you know their plan of action because they've already done their plan of action ahead of time they do not I, let me repeat this they do not fail failure is not an option for them because they're managing risk and our software is keying into their rebalancing of their currency portfolio that's why I call this currency portfolio rebalancing and actually prove the theory I'm actually writing a paper right now on it because no one out there can contest my theory and now I can actually prove my theory and this is the reason why the software was created this is it now this indicator here you know and we'll put it on the 15 minute let's see bad boy it's on the five minute so if we put on you have to change it manually of course give it a second give it a second and you'll see what it looks like on a 15 minute because what we were seeing was a five minute now here for instance would this indicator have told you take the trade short the answer is no these dots on the 30 minute told you take the trade short so that means that if you would have gone in here when it was announcing it to you for you to get in from here to here right now you would be up 38 pips now I told you to take this trade long here and to pull out at 20 pips so you would have picked up around 15 to 18 pips but then you could have taken this trade short because it had already plotted and you would have picked up another 35 pips so that means that you would have made 50 pips for the day we call that a hallelujah moment yes I can show the scanning let us go here now and we are going to close this workspace and we're going to open the new workspace I like it when people want to ask how the next tool works open workspace Phoenix market analyzer One second. Got to give it a second to plot because we have here, I'll pull this up in a second go to webinar slows down now I can only show you for instance one two three four five okay so we're gonna put this down here and we're going to expand these here I love that when it says trade with me it's like a gift from heaven did you hear that could you hear the program say trade with me it had said it right here with USCN oh joy let's go to the USCN analyze me oh 
words to live by. Really, it just, you know, if you don't cry every time that it tells you trade with me or analyze me, there's something wrong with you. Now, the beautiful thing about this market analyzer is this. This is where it becomes just, God, I mean, you, you sort of just want it to go, yes, incredible, is that you're going to get an email for each and every currency that you have. So let's say that you only want to trade five currencies. And if that's your case, good for you. I like to trade 20. Every time that they get close to the trend stop here, by about 10 pips, it'll say, analyze me. Every time that it gets close to, in this case, the power dots, it's going to say, trade with me. Now, this is the 15 minute, this is the, uh, the 10 minute, and I wanted to see, oh, the US yen, yes, this is it. So here, for instance, on the 10 minute, I didn't get anything, nothing. But on the 15 minute, I got a gift for one, two, three, four, an hour, an hour notice, an hour and a half notice. Am I long in this one? You betcha. I'm taking this long and now, yes, my dear, I will trade with you. And so now, it's basically telling you, go long in the US yen. Here, it would have told you, go short. Here, of course, this would not have really counted for a trade. Why? Because they were already directional price action was trading above this and they were going to breach right through it. They were going to rip right through it. But then they repeated the cycle again and it came right back down from it. Now let's look at the volume here. Ooh, this is where it gets interesting. Data box. So here, for instance, we have, let's see, down, 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 right there, buddy. Don't you move. Stay right there. So here, for instance, they were trying to unload 118 million short, desperately. And there was only 89 million interested in buying. That's why this candle here, of course, went long and is going long. 68 million long, 52 million short. So there, it's in demand. Now here, when it plotted, they were unloading 238 million, and there were only 273 million bought or interested at that point. And that's why it drove it so high and then came right back down. But the fact that they're plotting again is telling you. Now, here's the thing. They went up but failed to continue. So now, for instance, you see how this is starting to trade to the downside and how price action is trading below? If this candle does not breach this level right here, 118.68, then I cannot in good sense take this long because it's going to come short and it's going to break this level. What has happened every time they break this level historically right here? Look at that. They come down. So, fact of the matter is you got an alert saying trade with me. So now it's your decision to analyze the trade correctly and determine if this is going to go long or short. Now, here they're trading too close to the power dots, even though they bounced off of them, and they did it again. So I, want to, I need to see this candle continue, or the next candle continue to go to the upside at this point. Let's take a look at another one, the pound Aussie. And we were looking at that one. Now I have the market analyzer on the 15 minute. You can change it and put on the 10 minute, the 30 minute, it's up to you. You know, depending on how you wish to trade. If you wish to trade using the uh, higher time frames because you're more of a, you know, swing trader, go for it. No harm, no foul, make no mistake. 
So here, for instance, it said trade with me, but I'm trying to figure out why. Because it announced it when it was tr close to the ATR level here, in this case the trend stop. They broke right through it. Question is, will it come down? Now, at this point, I really don't have anything telling me that it will come down further from here. I don't have any power dots up here, even though this level is lower than this level, and so that also tells you that they're more likely going to come down. But we had already seen this. They had come down on the higher time frame, the 30-minute, and we can go to the 30-minute on this one. Let's go to the 30-minute, and we'll leave this one at the 10-minute right here. Now, you can link these charts, which is a beautiful thing about Ninja Trader, that you can link them. It's a real awesome tool. I mean, Ninja really outdid themselves. So give it, give it a minute for it to populate. And again, the only reason why it's working so slow is because GoToWebinar takes up so much memory. Now, here, for instance, we said that it was going to come down, which it did, and it is trading right here. Now, they broke below this level, which we talked about, so that means that they're going to try and make an attempt to come all the way down So to 1908. That's the target. 1908 so they have to come right here or yeah about yeah about 1908 that's the target that's a big drop from 1980 to 1908 so that means that right now if you would have taken my recommendation when I said short it you would be up Oh, no, wrong. That's wrong. Let's kill that. Let's try that again. <sighs> I hate when that happens. Oh, I see why. Okay. So, let's take it from there to there. 59 pips. Wow. 59 pips. That's huge. So, yes, whenever this, and, and if you have 10, 20 pairs on this thing, yeah, you're going to, you know, you can, you can program it to email you, or if you have your computer on, it'll say, trade with me, analyze me, trade with me, analyze me. And so you'll be able to get a lot of these, uh, analyze these trades in a very specific manner, because now this program is going to take you to the chart when you need to be looking at it not wasting your time. We just finished designing the market analyzer. Question. What happens when you link the charts? Well, you can see how the mouse moves. See how they're both moving. Like here, for instance, right here, this is where on the 15-minute, you can see that bullish candle right there that I have it. That's showing what happened there. So if I move, this is a 10-minute, so this is still where that 15-minute candle, that 30-minute candle is at. See how this goes to the next candle and stays and see how it starts to come down, and then boom, this one kicks in. Well, you literally had on the 10 minute, 30 minutes to take this trade short before it actually went short. So that means that your entry could have been here. You'd be up 60 pips. Because the higher the time frame and the power dots show up, the more valuable that trade is. Now this trade we talked about was a great trade to the downside. But this plotted lower than this. And on the 30-minute, which basically told you, take the trade and throw the kitchen sink at it and don't think twice about it. 
and you knew that your exit, because we drew lines in the other one, I didn't draw lines in this one because I have to change, you know, from uh, currency pair to currency pair, so it makes it very difficult, so I have two workspaces, one where I draw my lines, and I know, and the other one where I'm basically just getting, uh, you know, the alerts from. But look, the, oh, they made it to 190.04, oops. So not only did they hit my mark, they went right through it. So it went from 190.80 to 190.05. Ouch. We caught that trade from the very beginning. And we said it was going to be about 75, a 75 pip move. So I think that if you're not excited about this software, like I said, there's something wrong with you. You must seek psychological help. Have some coffee. Eat your breakfast or dinner or lunch, wherever you're at, and make an appointment now. And then call me. Because if you're ready to make money in 2015, you need to be on your phone ASAP as soon as we're done. You need to be emailing me ASAP. And if you wish to talk on Skype, I'm going to put my Skype here because I think it's important for you to have as well. And you can send me a message on Skype and we can speak on Skype as well. And I've had this Skype name for a very, very long time. And no, there are no more discounts. Because this software is worth every penny and then some. Now, I can't save the world, and I'm not interested in saving the world. I'm interested in helping those that are willing to help and save themselves. Because not only are you going to learn to trade Forex the right way with the institutional mindset, but you're also going to be learn to able to trade futures and stocks. I don't trade stocks, but I'll show you how. You know, I trade Forex and I trade futures. And you could, let's say you wanted to trade gold, crude, uh, rice, currency futures, aluminum, platinum, meats, uh, what's another one? Let me think. Let me think. Silver. Um, what's another one? That doesn't matter. You know, even if they offered a tin can, you could trade it with the software. So did I not say that the higher the time frame, the more valid the trade was in the direction? And look at that, baby. It came down right smack at it. It is a beautiful thing when you're able to, you know, to really take the fear out of trading, quite honestly. A beautiful thing. And that's what we've done. So hopefully you appreciate what you've seen today. And like I said, it's going to take us three days for you to learn how to use the software correctly, how to analyze the trades. And then after that, you're on your own. But you're going to be on your own in a very good manner. And if you need more time, then, you know, we can talk about extra lessons, of course. But I think that it's something that you're going to grow and evolve into. And that's basically all we have for today. So I want to thank you very much for joining us this Monday, December 15, 2014. And I look forward to your emails. I look forward to your comments. I look forward to your calls. I look forward to your Skypes. I look forward to this week. May you have a successful trading week. And if you don't, call me. Life will get better with Phoenix Trading Strategies. That I can promise you. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful, ooh, I know it's the euro dollar. Let's pull the euro dollar real quickly, see what it looks like, because it's trading off of an ATR. Give it a second, give it a second. 
before we go, give it a second. Oh, trade with you on the 15 minute, really? Wow, on the euro, that'll be interesting. Now this has a voice, so anytime that it comes up, it'll say trade with me. Anytime that it goes down, it'll say trade with me. This is telling, ooh, look at this, this plotted here. We said it was gonna come down on the euro, but it was really very minimal, 10 pips. Yeah, that's a lot of risk. Let's see what it looks like on the 15 here. So normally during the US session, you can find give or take five, ten trades. Asian session, you'll find about five trades. European session, you can find up to 15. And then you can cherry pick and say, I like this one, 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 I don't like this one. And so then you can start to narrow it down to the top three. And then at that point, it just gets nasty for the banks, but not for you. Because you've paid your dues, and your trading will take you to a whole other level. And you will rise from the ashes like a phoenix. Thus, phoenix trading strategies. So that's all we have today. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Look forward to talking with a lot of you. Rick, we have a trading session today at 3 o'clock Pacific. I will be here. Be ready. And everyone else, all the best. I look forward to your emails. I will be responding to them. Annette, forgive me for not responding sooner. Uh, uh, my program hasn't gotten the videos up, but I'm working on that this week, so we should have all the videos up uh, for everyone to view of the sessions that we've had. Thank you so much. Have a great week, and all the best. Bye-bye now.